One of these men has been as deep beneath the sea as man can ever go. What is your name, please? My name is Don Walsh. My name is Don Walsh. My name is Don Walsh. Only one of these men is the real Lieutenant Don Walsh. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Pat Carroll, Don Amici, and Betty White. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much and welcome once again to, to Tell the Truth. Tell the Truth is brought to you this week by Dristan Nasal Mist, the new decongestant spray for relief of miseries of sinus congestion and head colds. Betty, it's awful nice to have you back. Well, it's lovely to be back, Bud, but that sneaky Peggy Cass with nine right. She did all right, didn't she? Polly you? and I took a, a vote, and we think she ought to be drummed out of the core. Well, she drummed herself out. She ran right after she did it. <laughs> Pat, a warm welcome to you. To well, thank you very too. much, Bud. I hope you enjoy it. I think you will. Oh, I'm sure I will. I know we'll enjoy you. Panel, will you please open your affidavit envelopes, take out the affidavit cards, and follow along as I read from mine. I, Lieutenant Don Walsh, am officer in charge of the Navy's deep diving research bathyscaphe, Trieste. Jacques Picard and I set a new depth record when we reached bottom at the deepest known spot in all the oceans. For 30 minutes, we rested in the silt at a depth of 35,800 feet, almost seven miles beneath the surface of the Pacific. We had been deeper by two miles than man had ever ventured before. Signed, Lieutenant Don Walsh. Here you have just met three nice young men, each one claiming to be Lieutenant Don Walsh, underwater explorer. And let us begin this first round of questioning with Betty White. Betty? Thank you, Bud. Number one, what is the difference between a bathyscaphe and a bathysphere? Bathysphere is lowered on a cable. Number two, uh, how does a bathyscaphe differ from that? It's a flotation mechanism that is lowered with weights. Uh, number three, is there any difference in the shape of the two? Yes, there is. Lots of luck. What is it? <laughs> what is the difference in the shape? A bathysphere is a sphere. It's uh, round. Thank you. Number one, what is the shape of a bathyscaphe? Well, a bathyscaphe is sausage shape with a sphere on the bottom. Number three, uh, did you find any life on the bottom of the ocean that deep? Yes, we did. Number two, did the fish tend to be flat? Tom Poston, please. <laughs> Flat fish. All right, I'll start uh, with number two. Uh, what is the uh, previous history of your uh, partner in this, Mr. Picard? Doesn't he come from a family of uh, deep sea divers, number two? Uh, yes, he is. Uh, his father is August Picard. Number one, what discovery was the very first one you made on your trip? first thing you discovered from a scientific standpoint? Which trip? The first trip. The one where you went the deepest of all. I mean, the one where you, uh, I don't know what I'm talking we discovered about. That we, we discovered that we could do it. Is that what you mean? Well, not right away. That wasn't the first discovery. Number three, is there something that you could tell me about? Right away, you discovered something as you had descended that you hadn't previously anticipated. It was wet. <laughs> Number two, do you know what I'm talking about, even? There were certain currents in the water which impeded our descent. Well, that's possibly earliest. Pat Carroll, please. Uh, number two, what are the needs of a ship? <laughs> I've watched the show before. I just wanted you to know that. You have too. It's where the vertical and the horizontal frames are joined. Mm -hmm. uh, number, uh, I just asked. I didn't know. <laughs> number one. Uh, what is the previous depth record? It says here that uh, we had been deeper by two miles than man had ever ventured before. Uh, what was the last record held that you went two miles more than? Our own record, which was 24,000 feet. I see. Uh, number three, uh, who is Jacques Cousteau? Jacques Cousteau is the, uh, I think he's considered the father of uh, skin diving right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Don? 
Number uh, one, what is the uh, value of these uh, 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 trial, these runs that you make, these depth uh, descents? Well, I suppose uh, just the exploration of the unknown. Uh, number two, would, would, would you know what the exact uh, reason for these uh, descents are? To precisely me measure the deepest depth underwater and discover if life exists. Number three, would you uh, concur with these answers? Generally. Mm. Uh, <laughs> number, uh, number one, what is the pressure at uh, uh, 35,000 feet uh, per square inch? Eight tons per square inch. Eight, would, would you agree with that, number two? Yes. Whether he does or not, we'll all have to agree that it's time to vote. So will you kindly do so right now, panel? That means, of course, without consultation, will you mark your ballot? Vote thereby for number one, number two, or number three. As is our custom, the team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? No, mine is. <laughs> could we go around once more? <laughs> I wish we could. I find it interesting. Tom, have you marked yet? No. I'm going back over the no answers. Uh -huh. I thought you were communing with the spirit. Gee, uh, I guess, oh. All right, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. I didn't get a chance to go back over all of the answers to figure out why. <laughs> Pat, which one did you think is the real Well, one? you notice I had to cross it out because I had two down first because he looked so nautical and kind of clean cut around the chin. But I went to number one, again, because uh, he's wearing a gorgeous red vest, which would lead me to believe he's kind of a liver and would go down in the ocean. <laughs> All right, I'm with you. That will be to your vote, please. But I uh, voted for number two, and after that uh, explanation to Pat's as to why she voted for number one, I wish I could change my vote here. <laughs> Betty. Well, a liver wouldn't spend too much time below the sea, I shouldn't think. <laughs> But Don, you chickened out on me. Don said that number two couldn't be it because his hat didn't fit. But I still voted for him because number three seemed a little tall to fit into a bathos gas. All right. Could have bent his knees and ooched down a bit, I <laughs> <Don't> guess. <really. laughs> but in any event, there we have it. The way we voted, and now it's up to you to vote along with us and see how right or wrong you may be. Because we're about to find out which one of these three gentlemen is the real underwater explorer. The will or real, Don Walsh. Please stand up. Privilege to have you with us, sir. Believe me. It takes and one to know one. <laughs> <laughs> you said that from one liver to another. <laughs> All right. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, sir? My name is Picard Wagner, public information supervisor for AT&T. <laughs> Thank you. And now, number three, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Carson McLean. I'm a marketing representative for E.I. DuPont de Nemours. <laughs> well, we check up on our score and we find that there were, let me see, one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each for a not untidy little sum of $750 from Dristan Nasal Mist and, of course, a gift package of fine products from the makers of Dristan Nasal Mist. Thank you for being with us, gentlemen, and sharing your experiences with us. Good night and good luck. All right, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Patricia McCormick. My name is Patricia McCormick. My name is Patricia McCormick. Follow along once again, panel, if you will, please, with your copies of this affidavit. I, Patricia McCormick, am a bullfighter. I was the first woman from this country to fight bulls professionally. I have appeared in bull rings both in Mexico and South America. To date, I have fought more than 300 bulls. Signed, Patricia McCormick. <laughs> These ladies, each one claiming to be Patricia McCormick, Lady Bullfighter. And we'll start this round of questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Oh, thank you. Let's see. 
Miss McCormick, number one, what does uh, the expression on wheels mean in regard to bullfighting? Uh, speed, fastness, how fast the bull is rolling. Uh, number two, do you agree with that? No, I'm not familiar with this term. This term on wheels. Do you know number three just by chance? It could refer to that. It also could refer to the, uh, the uh, cart used in the practice of killing. Number three, do you happen to know what the traditional song or tune, the musical composition that you associate, one associates with bullfighting? I believe you're thinking of La Virgen de Macarena. Yes, I am. Number two? No, number one, what does planning the hooks mean? Putting in the banderillas. And how is that accomplished? Pat? Uh, number one, uh, you are, say, the first uh, well-known uh, lady bullfighter from this country. Are there any other uh, well-known women uh, fighters in bulls? Yes, Conchita Cintron has a reputation. Thank you. Uh, number two. Uh, you must be kind. No. You must be kind. Wow. There is a bit of a professional zingy in there. Uh, number two, what is the name of the outfit that Toreros wear? The particular one that I have on is called a traje corto. I see. Uh, number three, uh, uh, how or why would you connect the name Barnaby Conrad with bullfighting? I believe he's the uh, author of uh, two very fine bullfighting books. Mm -hmm. Don, number one, what is Arusa's first name? Carlos. Number two, what does he do now? He is retired. What, is it, what does he do? What does he do for a living? He is in Mexico at this time, and he is raising bulls. Uh, number three, what does mano a mano mean? Mano a mano are two matadors fighting in competition. Uh, number two, who, or number one, who was it uh, uh, fought mano a mano when uh, Manolete was killed? Luis Miguel Domini. Yeah. Uh, number th uh, two, is Belmonte still alive? Belmonte is still alive, yes. Uh, number three, about how old would he be? Oh, I'd say offhand, close to 70. Uh, number one, who is... Betty? Who is Betty? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bud. Number one, who is? <laughs> uh, number one, why do you fight bulls? The excitement and the challenge. Number two, why do you fight bulls? The beauty of the art, the excitement, the challenge of competition in a field that is predominantly for a man. Number three, what's your reason? Oh, because it started as an obsession. Now it's the only thing I do know to do. Number one, what is the difference between a toreador and a picador? The picador places the vara, or the large pick, into the back of a bull. The Torio door kills the bull. You just lost me, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, lost or not, we'll find you in time for voting, I'm sure, Betty. So will you, panel, please, since time is gone for questioning, mark your ballot. As usual, without consultation, vote for number one, number two, or number three. Are we all set? Okay, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? Gee, I really touted myself off at the very last second. I was sure it was number one. <laughs> so you voted for? Gee, I, well, I, I, I still think it was number one. But I voted for number three. Okay, Pat, for whom did you vote? I, I, I voted for number one because she not only seemed knowledgeable, but she looks like a lady who wouldn't be a, a bullfighter lady. Who wouldn't be? Yes. All righty. We Good like some, some reasoning like that every week. <laughs> Don. Well, I voted for number three, and this is pure guess. This is another one of those tributes to Willie Stein and the way these people have been drilled. Boy, they really have been drilled. Beautiful. Uh, beautiful. Uh, the questions that I was answering were kind of uh, good questions, I thought. But I got nowhere with them, none of them. <laughs> Betty. I voted for number two because Tom couldn't decide between one and three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look at that vote. That's just the way it's going to be all night. That Willie Stein is a cruel man. Well, as in bullfighting, we on this show have our own particular moment of truth. And this is it right now as we discover which one of these ladies is the real professional bullfighter. So, will the real Patricia McCormick please stand up?
Tom, are you still sorry you didn't vote for number one? No, but I think I should be disqualified. I obviously copped out there. I thought, most, <laughs> I thought all we should do is simply present your ears to Patricia. <laughs> May I ask a question? Please, Tom. Do, uh, do, prior to today, either number one or number two, know anything about bullfighting? Yes. Yes. Oh, you did? Yes. Ah, well, this makes a big difference. All right. Number one, let's find out about you. Now, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Jennifer Brown, and I'm a researcher for the Kennecott Copper Corporation here in New York. Thank you. And number two, if you tell us your real name and what you really do. My name is Barbara Shepard, and I'm a stewardess with Pan American World Airways. <laughs> a checkup at the store and we find that two of our panelists did guess correctly but that means two guessed incorrectly so at two hundred and fifty dollars each for wrong votes we have a total of five hundred dollars for you ladies as well as of course a gift package of fine products from the makers of Tristan nasal mist thank you very much for being with us i don't think you found it quite as serious as a bull ring but good night and god bless you tell me i present our third team of challengers What is your name, please? My name is Grover C. Criswell. My name is Grover C. Criswell. My name is Grover C. Criswell. Follow along once again, panel, if you will, please. I, Grover C. Criswell, am the mayor of St. Petersburg Beach, Florida. My profession, however, is buying and selling Confederate money. And the book I have authored is now considered the standard catalog on the subject. The $25 million that I own makes me the richest man in the world in Confederate money. Signed, Grover C. Criswell. <laughs> Here we have three gentlemen in a different category of being the richest man in the world with Confederate money. Each one claiming to be this, Grover C. Criswell. We'll start this round with Don Amici. Don. Thank you, bud. Uh, I don't mean to be fresh with this question, number one, but what is your salary? About $6,000 a year as mayor. About? Yes, because I have other means. Well, no, I mean as mayor. What exactly? Oh, $5,750. And what is your salary, number two? $7,800. And number three? $6,740. I see. Thank you. Uh, it all depends on which number, side of the tracks you're Yes, I, I understand. I understand. Uh, number uh, uh, two, what is your term as mayor? Two years. I have a year to serve, Don. You still have a year to go? Yes. Uh, number three, how far is St. Petersburg from St. Petersburg Beach? About 10 miles. Uh, number one, who trains at St. Petersburg? What team? Uh, uh, the Yankees and the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, number two, where are the Yankees going next year? Fort Lauderdale. Betty? Thank you, bud. Number one, what is the going rate for Confederate money? How much, if, would a, if I had a dollar, how much Confederate money would that buy? Well, uh, it, how much would it buy? How much Confederate money could I buy with one dollar? Oh, one dollar. Oh, a dollar for dollar? At this present time, yes, ma'am. You are loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, what is the largest denomination bill in Confederate money? $1,000 was the largest it was ever made. Number three, what was the smallest denomination? 50 cents. Number one, what was the largest denomination? $1,000. You two boys have gotten together. Number three, who was the last mayor of St. Petersburg Beach? Uh, Bill Miller. Tom? Thank you. Number three is J. Linwood King. A dealer in Confederate money? I don't know. I never heard of him. Well, he used to tell me to save my Confederate money because the <laughs> South would rise again. <laughs> <laughs> and I know he's got, a, he's got a bundle in that kind of stuff. Do you think, number two, do you think the centennial will increase the value of your funny money? I'm going, it's not funny money, it's uh, <laughs> worth it. Yeah. I'm, going to display, uh, I'm going to display my money at Atlanta, Georgia in about two months. The uh, entire collection I have, Tom, and I doubt that it will increase in value because it's pretty valuable already. A thousand dollar bill is worth a thousand dollars now. What does your tie say, number two? I want Confederate. 
Money meaning? Anything, Confederate. <laughs> uh, now, I don't know whether this is a cricket question or not, because I don't think it could be construed as a commercial, but what is the title of your book? Con uh, excuse me, number two. What Confederate is the and Southern State Currency. Uh, uh, number three, what is the title of your book? Same thing. <laughs> number one? That's great. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> uh, number two, um, uh, what are your uh, uh, duties as mayor in St. Petersburg Beach? Well, to welcome Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio, <laughs> like I had the past few days, to hold city council meetings and uh, the general mayor's duties. Mm -hmm. What are your office hours? There's no office hours. Mm -hmm. I get on <laughs> like most politicians when it... I see. Uh, That's it. And like most politicians, we have to close our ballot boxes right now because it's time for us to mark these ballots and vote and find out what's what. So without consultation, will you vote, please, panel? For number one, for number two, or for number three? <laughs> Tom is off in his own world tonight. I don't... know quite what it is. I usually know what I want to vote I for, and do. I did before. I did until... Patty started questioning, and then number two just put me right off with well, those great answers. your vote? Number three. Number three. I'm afraid, That's number three. I'm, I'm afraid I, I still go for number two because he got so irate when Tom said funny money. <laughs> All right, Don, your vote. I voted for number uh, two for two reasons. I would hate like... Uh, I would hate to think that uh, uh, a city that, like St. Petersburg Beach would pay less than seven eight hundred dollars a year to a mayor, and also he looks like a, a wonderful southern gentleman that I know by the name of Fred Hooper. And uh, pardon me. He said thank you, <laughs> Betty. I think I'm being lulled into a, a sense of security here because we got more answers from number two. We didn't question number one and three quite as much. Number one looks like a mayor more than anybody. Number three was very well informed, but I'm going to go. Not for, Pat, but with number two. All right, well, there we have it. Now let's find out. We have, again, a split vote of three and one and none. So let's see who's right and who's wrong. You playing along with us at home, are you? All right, this is your moment of reckoning, too. As we discover which one of these gentlemen is the real richest man in the world in Confederate money. So will the real Grover C. Criswell please stand up? <laughs> Uh, man and boy, I've been doing oh, this show for four and a half years, and that was the sneakiest yeah. finale I've ever seen. <laughs> boy, they must have rehearsed that down. What timing. What that Willie timing. Stein is taking acting lessons yeah. along with all those other things <laughs> he's doing. Sure right. They are marvelous. All right, let's find out about these other two. Now, number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? I'm William R. Boyd III, the director of domestic aviation sales for the City Service Oil Company. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, you garnered most of the votes and did the best pooling. Uh, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is James C. Fletcher, Jr. I'm a vice president of Midnight Sun Broadcasting Company in Alaska. <laughs> it must be southern Alaska. <laughs> I've been making an observation. This man missed his calling. <laughs> he sure did. Couldn't have gotten any farther away from the South than he tried. No. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, let's check on the score here now. We find that thanks to some good fooling, we, uh, on the part of our challengers, again, there were three incorrect votes at $250 each for the second time tonight, a total from Dristan of $750. Gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed your visit. On your way out, you'll receive a gift package of fine products from the makers of Dristan Nasal Mist. Thanks so much for being with us. Good night. Good luck to you. Good night, panel. Good night, Good night Bud Cotty is saying good night from Dristan Nasal Mist and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Miss Carol's Gown is by Seal Chapman. The name in our mailbox is Porter. To our friends, we're Pete and Gladys. And we're at home next on most of these stations. Drop in. <laughs>
tell the truth has been brought to you tonight by InfraRub, the European discovery for hours of relief from chronic minor pain of arthritis, rheumatism, muscular aches. Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, this program was pre-recorded.